So, uh, dear sisters and brothers, young people and children, we have come together this morning to listen to a message from God through His servant. As Reformed Protestants, our focus is on the Word of God and to listen to the Word as it is delivered to us by God's messenger. See, there are important elements in our worship service that are so important that should not be underestimated. However, the Word of God in human language, a language that we understand, is the primary focus of our coming together in the sanctuary this morning and every other Sunday morning. The Word of God is an old word. The accounts and stories have been lived many, many centuries ago. It is an amazing and awesome God that we serve. And the Word is very alive and relevant also in the time that we are living in. The Word is alive. It is a powerful Word. And men and women's lives have been radically changed by the life-transforming power of the Word of God. It is also a radical word. It cuts deep into the very fiber of our existence. It cuts deeper than any two-edged sword. And it reveals the essence, very essence of our being. The power of the word blows away all our pretenses and we are revealed. Yes, we are exposed by the light of the word. It is an illuminating word. It lightens up the world. It destroys, it annihilates the threatening darkness that seeks to engulf us, to swallow us and to render us powerless and to cast us into desperate helplessness. The word cuts like a surgeon's scalpel, like an operation knife, willing to bring about healing. It restores us, calms us, and gives us hope. God talks to us through His word, through His logos. Logos is the Greek word which means ideas or thoughts about God, words about God. The Word of God, the idea of God that came into the world that took human flesh and dwelt amongst us in the person of the Son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, the leader of the church. This Word shone in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness could not overwhelm this Word. It came unto its own was rejected, despised, and crucified. First wounded, beaten and bloody, whipped by drunken Roman soldiers. And then the word carried the cross to the to God of the Calvary. And the word was scarred by nails and bruised by a crown of thorns. The word was raised up on the cross so that all could see the love of God displayed on the ragged wooden cross on the hill called Golgotha. Wounded for how many could be The word died. Praise God. Hallelujah. The word was raised by the power of God on the third day. The word was resurrected and the word ascended to heaven where it sits at the right hand of God in a position of utmost favor. Jesus is the Word. And it is He who intercedes on our behalf to the Father. And He said that everything that we ask the Father in His name, we will receive. It is unto Jesus who is the perfect example of godly love that you and I come this morning and through whom we worship God Almighty the way, the truth, the life we come in the name of Jesus this morning 
in whose stripes lie our healing. May the word inspire us this morning as we ponder, as we explore the dynamics of love. What love is, love in the biblical sense of the word, God's love in terms of our red portion of scripture. Love that God has for us, not because we love Him, but as we have read, because He loves us first. Yes, as you know, it is that time of the year again. Valentine's, Valentine's time. It is the season of love. Couples in love have gone all the way to make Valentine the 14th of February a remarkable and unforgettable experience. Floral bouquets and lunches and dinners were planned and for many it was too late to make dinner reservations because most restaurants were full. Fully booked. Florists were inundated with orders for floral arrangements, roses and carnations and were delivered to loved ones near and far away. Indeed, February, dear sisters and brothers, is the month of love. Romance and romantic exploration. Wives and girlfriends were looking forward on the 14th to the various ways in which their loved ones would surprise them. As would have surprised them. So, when we talk about all these things, what is Valentine's Day? And who is Saint Valentine? And you could or may even ask, give us a Christian perspective on Valentine's Day. What is the history of Valentine's Day? And let me attempt to answer some of these questions because you may know a lot more than I about this topic. However, I shall try to answer to the best of my knowledge and as, as per the information which I can gather. It is just possible that a vast majority of us may be wondering who St. Valentine was and why so many people get carried away in the spirit of Valentine's Day around the second week of February every year. St. Valentine, according to the research, they were actually two different people. And coincidentally, they were martyred on the same day in the year 270, before the common era, oh, after the common era, which is after Christ. So feasts commemorating them were celebrated on the 14th of February each year. The one St. Valentine was a, a priest and he was a physician, he was a medical doctor who died in Rome during the persecution of the Christians under, Roman, under the Roman Emperor Claudius II Gothicus. The other St. Valentine was a bishop, attorney in Italy, who was also martyred in Rome. So the question arises, as to why do people send Valentines and love tokens on Valentine's Day each year? You see, the origin of that tradition comes from an early European belief that the second week of February was when birds begin to mate. The idea suggests that lovers should probably exchange looks and gifts on February the 14th in conjunction, in conjunction or in relation to what was happening in nature. It does not have any real connection with the saint's day. Nowadays, Valentine's Day is observed as a special day for love and romance. However, as Christians, we know that in terms of God's Word, and more specifically so 1 John 4 verse 16, Love originates from God and that God is love. A lot of different actions associated with the celebration of Valentine's Day 
are observed by many people all over the world. Gods with hearts and little poems or poems on them, candy and flowers, are given to someone you love. Images of cupids flying around and shooting their arrows of love into young people, older people, young and old alike, expressing their affection for their sweethearts. February the 14th means candy, means flowers, cards, and cupids to many. And you know, our Christian fathers and mothers, those members of the early Christian church will be quite amazed at what has become of Valentine's Day. What we call and understand to be Valentine's Day was at one time the feast of Saint Valentine. It was a religious holiday. Believe you me, they would be especially shocked at the use of Cupid since he was a character from pagan mythology. For Christians in the past, Valentine's Day was a day to remember and a day to celebrate the life and death of Christian martyrs, two Christian martyrs. See, St. Valentine was a priest near Rome in Italy. The other one, the other one was a doctor, a physician. In about the year 270 after Christ, at that time, there was this practice of worshipping the Caesar, the Kaiser Cultus. Medicine was for the Kaiser near Solomon Man, but Hail Caesar being Caesar is half God, half man. And during the persecution of the Christians, Valentine was arrested. Some say he was arrested because he was performing Christian marriages. But others say he again he was arrested for helping uh, Christians escape from prison. And during the trial, they asked Valentine what he thought of the Roman gods, Jupiter and Mercury. Of course, Valentine said they were false gods and that the only true God is the God the followers of Jesus Christ calls Father. The Romans threw him in prison for insulting their gods. While in prison, Valentine was ministering to other people in prison also, even to the gods. And one of the gods was a man who had adopted a blind girl. He asked Valentine if Valentine's God could help his daughter. And Valentine prayed and the girl was given a sight. And the God and his whole family, they were 46 in total, believed in Jesus Christ and they were baptized. And when this, the, 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 the Caesar heard what had happened, he called upon the leader of his troops in the prison and said they must execute Valentine and he was beheaded. Valentine knew that he might get caught for his Christian activities. He knew that if he told the court the truth about the Roman gods, that he would be thrown into prison. And he knew that if he continued to wish to witness about Christ, he would make his captors very angry. But he continued because he loved the Lord and his fellow human beings. He was willing to risk his life to free the prisoners to spread the good news of Jesus Christ to all who needed to know it. And indeed, he died. The Bible says, no one has greater love than this. To lay down one's life for your friends, John 15, 13, God showed us this love by coming in Christ to die for our sins. And St. Valentine demonstrated this love when he died for his friends. And this is the kind of love that Valentine's Day is about in the true sense of the word. It's all about the Christian message, the message of love. You see, Valentine's Day, dear sisters and brothers, is no longer part of the Christian calendar, the Roman Catholic Church in 1969, if you're off the calendar. In our context, as it is celebrated, it is not a feast, neither a celebration or a memorial of the martyrs. 
The celebration today of Valentine's Day in the world clearly displays a, a return to more pagan-like celebrations on February the 14th. But this is not surprising. And neither is the total commercialization of the day. Millions of people all over the world celebrate Valentine's Day in one fashion or, in other, or another. Said so, it is not celebrated, not even remotely, in a Christian manner by, by most people. The Bible gives us a clear definition of love. Matthew 22, 39 says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said that this is the second commandment, the first being that you should love God above all else in the second one, equal to that, to love your neighbor as yourself. Love is commonly described as an emotion. However, God did not intend for love to be merely an emotion. True love, biblical love, was intended to be action. The word love that we are commanded to pursue is the word agapo. Agapo means to actively care for, to become involved with. We are expected to actively show love in the world that we love it where God has placed us. And how can we do this? We need to actively reach out in our communities, with the mission of helping the hurting and the needy. And only through our actions can we show the love of God to the world. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 verse 3, Though I have bestowed all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love. Dear sisters and brothers, is one of the foundational principles of the Christian life. In fact, we can say that love is the foundation of Christianity. Christianity is the rock on which love is built. 1 John 4, 7 says, Dear friends, let us love one another, because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Without love, nothing else matters. We can give all we have, and in the end it means nothing. If our neighbor does not come directly from the love of God. Here we can also refer to Matthew 22 verses 34 to 40. Then one of them, a lawyer asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, and all the law and the prophets. We should take this instruction of Jesus to heart. Loving the Christian life, is reduced to two simple commands. Love God. And out of the love for God flows the love for your neighbor. If Christianity is so simple, why do people often fail to love out their faith? See, the love of God and human nature are contrary to each other. Common opposition in our car. The Bible teaches us that the human flesh is at war against God's spirit and that God's spirit is against the human flesh, is at war against the human flesh, the sucks, the body. The war is always against the body, the sucks, that the demands of the flesh. You see, the demands of the flesh is human, is self-seeking. God's love is self-giving. Human love ends. When personal sacrifice with no hope begins. What is love then? The scripture uses several Greek words to describe love. The word philia means the love between friends. Friendship translated into love. The love that I have for a friend. The lift about the periphery that is the philos. 
Fidel Kuhn, ik heb u lief. Dus maar voor even, dat is nog gewoon. Als we zo vreemd zijn, want we naturally desire to have friends. The word love that we are commanded to follow is agapo. Agape. This means, as I've already said, to actively care for all the act of love. Agape. Love is the love of God. And it means self-giving, sacrificial love. Another Greek word for love is eros. This is the love, is love in its erotic form. The common word for immoral sexual conduct, thus fornication, is making love. This is derived from the Greek word eros. Knowing the Greek words is not necessary, but understanding the Bible principles that are very necessary. Only God has true self-giving and sacrificial love. When we are in Him, His love flows through us and we actively love others. The love of God is in us, therefore we have a choice to act. Public love is not an emotion, it is an act. It is love in action. When we are loving God and of allowing God that through, through Him we will love others, we shall find happiness by touching the lives of others. However, the emotions are not what drives love. Love is not an emotional thing, a feeling. There will be times that I do not feel like loving God. There will be also be times that I don't feel like loving myself or loving my neighbor. In Matthew 5, Jesus commanded, but I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. We know up front that we will never feel like loving our enemies. The command is to actively love our enemies, not just to tolerate them. Amen.